and uh, thank you from uh, wherever you're watching from and uh, welcome to the this edition of the 20th seeds of gold farm clinic recall uh, the one we had in mukono the 19th seeds of gold farm clinic where we looked at uh, coffee and fish well today we are here at uh, kawanda and uh, we shall be looking at very interesting enterprises banana and uh, organic vegetables well uh, bananas we shall uh, take you through crop management uh, soils management and commercialization. I have a team of uh, very experienced uh, people from Naro here uh, who will be taking us through these trainings. We are, I have Dr. Okrut Wilson and uh, Dr. Okay. Priva Namanya. Well, um, I think uh, the banana team is ready. Uh, let me just walk towards them. But uh, well, uh, this show, just like we did last time, you can send in your questions. If you have a question about banana, you have a question about uh, organic vegetables, you have a question to our sponsors. And don't forget this show is uh, sponsored by uh, Stanbic Bank, NSSF, and NARO. And of course, NTV, who have, who, are, who have made sure that you have it right at the, in the comfort of your sitting room. Uh, Mr. Okrut Wilson. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, uh, what are we looking at here today? Thank you. Uh, my name is Okrut, and we'll be talking about uh, the growing of bananas uh, with a commercial mind. Bananas uh, have been in this country for a long time, but we've been growing bananas half sadly, really not having the commercial mind at all, meaning that people have been growing with inferior varieties, varieties that are not very good, the local, not high yielding. They have also not been managing their bananas very well. Because for you to grow bananas well, you must manage your soil properly, you must manage the plant uh, uh, properly. Because there are three things interacting. Man, who is the manager, the soil, which must have anchor the plant, which must help the other one. And the three must operate well in unison for them to do it. That has not been happening very well. The farmers have not been keeping records, so they cannot keep track. They don't know the strong points, they don't know when to make, but whether they are making losses, they are just jumping up and down, I got the money, I got the money. So for you to be able to know your weak points and the strong points, you surely must keep your records. So what we are going to be doing today is that we are going to go across all the steps that we need to be able to produce a banana. Don't forget, banana farming has very many steps. And each step, in each step, we are going to be mindful of the costs that are involved. That means that if you plow around with your costs, you make them high, you lose. If you make them low, you stand the chances of benefiting from it. So what we are going to discuss now are activities falling with three, within three categories. Those activities that will be done before we plant. Those activities, the second one, that we do at planting. And then those activities that we do after planting. The activities that we do, for example, before we plant, include such activities like uh, selecting the site where we are going to put the bananas. Why must we select the site? Because it's absolutely important, bananas must be put in the right place. Don't go and put a banana where there were sick bananas before, where there are rocks, where the place floods, a place which is not accessible in case you have to sell your bananas. So the right place must be good. It must be a free draining place. And then you work it out yourself, the rest of the things. The second uh, aspect that we are going to consider is how to prepare your land. You prepare your land depending on how it is. You might have bought land which is forested. You might have to cut the forest. You could be having land which does not have even weeds. That in that case, you just have to prepare your land and de dig the hole. You might be having land which has got complicated weeds. You control the weeds. Uh, first, find a way of digging them. You might have a land which needs elaborate use of the tractor. Be mindful that a, the, the method you use will, will depend, the costs will depend on the method that you're using. So if you decide that you're going to slash if you're going to use just a mere slasher like this one here, you're going to slash, it means that the cost is likely to be low. The cost of slashing an acre is about 50,000 things if it doesn't have complicated weeds. However, if it is complicated weeds, it could go up to 100,000. The cost of plowing, for example, on the other hand, it's about, depending on an area, it could go up to 300,000. So every step that you're going to take, you'll be mindful of the cost. After preparing your land, you should now prepare then to mark 
you mark by marking i mean uh, de determining the positions where you're going to put your banana to fix your banana and you mark at a spacing of three meters between a hole or a plant and a plant is three meters between this plant and this one is three meters between this line and this one is three meters it is in that place where you put the peg that you are now going to what to dig your hole at that spacing of three meters by three meters you are like you are going to get 450 plants in an acre. It's very very important that you mark the spacing. This is uh, this is the spacing. This is the right spacing for the bananas to you. If you decide that you are going to narrow your spacing to one and a half meters, the number of plants is going to shoot very high, and what will me that will mean that the plants will overcrowd and you'll have small bunches. If on the other hand you decide that you are going to plant one banana here and another one after six meters, it means the population will reduce to about 200 cells. And that has implications as far as profitability is concerned. You'll have fewer plants. Now when you're digging your hole, dig the black soil on the other side and dig, uh, separate it from this soil. The sense is that this soil, you can see it black, has got more organic matter in most cases. It's richer than this other soil here. This soil here, we are then going to mix up two basins of this soil here, this one here, and push it back into the hole as we prepare to plant. So it's going, we are going to mix up, just pour it there and mix it. And then fill up our hole, mix up here. You could do the mixing here, you could do the mixing outside. But it's much easier to mix it from here, push this other soil there. After we've done the mixing, then the next thing is to fix the plant here in the middle. We've got two types of planting material. We have tissue culture plants. We've got tissue culture plants. The plantlets that have been prepared from the the lab, but we could also have the suckers that we have. Now, uh, can I allow me to cross there? Okay. Now, this materials a farmer can plant any material or the of his choice, but it has got implication of costs. Now, assuming this is called a maiden sucker, a maiden sucker is a sucker. A, a sucker which is all, uh, which is, could you call a, a maiden, a maiden? A maiden sucker is a big sucker and there are those who prefer that they want to plant. They are not going to plant them high, but they just want to get material from here. They believe that th this material is what does very well. By the way, the bigger the material you plant, the faster probably you get down, but the smaller the bunch. The smaller the material you plant, the, fa the, the a little longer you, it takes for you the bunch to mature, but you get a bigger bunch. Now this is called a maiden sucker, and this is called a sword sucker. We recommend that you plant sword suckers. These ones that have got sharp and they are vigorous and strong. Do not plant water suckers. Water suckers are suckers which are weak. Sometimes farmers go in for this one because it has leaves already. They go and plant this one, but in actual sense it is weak. So this one is weak, weak. There are farmers this one I said is a tissue culture plantlet, and this one is a water sucker. Some farmers say, I saw them bring materials from Kawanda. So he decides, because this one looks like this one, eh, it's all Samona. No, this one's different from this one here. So this one is weak, and this one is tissue culture plant. So all water suckers should not be, are not recommended for planting. Then we use now the sword sucker. But because we want to reduce the cost of planting, we then decide to what, do what we call comparing. We are going to peel this plant here, peel it and remain with this other part here. What is the implication? The implication is that the cost will go down. If you decide to transfer plants like this, say to Gulu, you use 1.5 million. If you decide to transfer this, you pack them in five bags, just four bags, which is 40,000. That is a large thing. That's a difference of 1.4. And that's, you're talking about prof profitability. Now our hole is almost ready for planting. You could plant either of these here, the equation. Sometimes farmers, because they have heard that bananas love water and like water, they imagine that water keeps inside this, this bag here. So they decide to plant it with this bag here. This bag is not for keeping the water here and should not be left in here. So you tear it off. Please tear it off before you plant. Tear it off. And when you tear it off, the, there's this other policing bag. Here, do not just simply throw it. Uh, collect all the polythene bags together. 
and then you will only fix the plant in the soil. Note that he's putting back only the black soil and we are not going to use this other red soil here. However, I'm not going to fix in this other tissue culture plant. Let us use what we call a paired comb because this is the cheapest method, technology, that any farmer can do. As long as the farmer knows that he has uh, sword suckers, he just picks up the sword sucker and then he cleans it and then he fixes it here. But before you do this, you have got the exercise of selecting out the plant. Where do you select the material that you plant? You select the material from already approved material. We, already, we have here, for example, already our material which, 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 which is resistant to diseases, which has better adaptability, which has good combustion rates, and it can give us heavy bunches. We, in, the terms, in terms of matoke, for example, we now have the matoke hybrids. We have the matoke hybrids, for example, here. Uh, we have narrow, narrow band 1, narrow band 2, narrow band 3, narrow band 4, and narrow band 5. We also have the cabanas here that we have 6H and 6.5. Eight of them can then be selected. Once you have planted them there vegetatively, you can be able, every farmer can be able to dig out the suckers. When you dig out using your varieties, Dr. Priva will be talking about the seeds in the seed systems. So in our hole, which is ready for planting, we now simply make a hole in the center. In the center of this one, that's enough. And then we fix this plant in the center here. Then we cover it. We cover it. Sometimes farmers are scared. They say, I'm not going to cover the whole thing. Cover it and leave a thickness of about four centimeters. Four centimeters is an equivalent of an inch. So about four centimeters. Do not over cover it. Don't bury like you're burying some animal. Bury it and give some space. Now, depending on the time when you're planting, you could be planting towards the season because you not, may never know, or you plant and the drought comes. It's advisable that you spot mulch on around this other hole here, then you put mulch. The mulch you put, mulch is dry grass which is put within the hole, open for me, to enable you to, to, to keep more moisture and water in the soil. Let the plant not get a lot of shock. You put us enough of it. You could put, there are different forms of mulch. The mulch, there are mulch, mulches which are external, they come outside. The richest mulches which come from outside the garden are the ones which are recommended because they put in. Mulches which come from inside, they put little, they only help you to keep water. So if you put them there, just to help you keep water there, the plant will germinate. But later on, we are not going to continue with them around in that system mulching here. We just simply need the plant to be protected, keep as much moisture here, as much as possible. And you wait. Don't keep coming here to open and see where the plant will be coming out from. No. It comes out and shoots out from there. At this point here, we have stopped. We have already planted our plant. So the activities that bring us up to planting now stop here. Now the next form of activities are the activities which involve managing the plant in the feed and managing the soil. It's absolutely important for us to understand that in the farming of bananas, there are three interacting factors. This should, be, should not leave the mind of the farmer. We have the soil, which is the biological bank, where we keep the resources. We have already put our resources there. This is the, this is the source of our fertilizers. Then we have the plant which man is growing to be able to give him that, the produce. So we have the three things. We have the soil, we have the plant, we have the man. The principle is that man must feed the soil, the soil must feed the plant, the plant must feed man. Sometimes people do the other way around, which is not good. Let not man feed the plant direct because there will be complaints. And let not man abandon the two of them because sometimes you plant and you just go and pick whether the bunches are there. When you do that, the soil and the plant will team up to make sure you don't get bunches and you don't blame them. So the protocol must be followed. Before you reach ROC3, you must pass through ROC1. There is no point about it. So follow the things that other way, and that's the way the things work. If you decide that you are going to bypass the ROC1, it's likely to say, this guy think I don't understand. I wait for them, wait for them, they come for a recommendation. So man should never get, for example, get liquid fertilizers apply on the leaves, the leaves get green, the soil will complain. On the other hand, he can decide to plant the plants and neglect them. The soil and the plant will team up. This is absolutely important. 
the soil and the plant will team up and keep saying, what does this boy think about us? And they talk in tongues and for you don't tongue. When they say, Rabba, Shakara, well, for you don't understand. Women, they are saying, let not give him bunches. It's absolutely important that you allow them to interact. Do your part, let them do their parts. Once you've done that, and that you're doing well, that things will flow well. What, the, what happens in the soil? I said the soil is a biological bank. We keep fertilizers. In the fertilizers, the fertilizers, there are two forms of fertilizers. We have organic fertilizers, those that involve manures, all sorts of manures, all sorts of, from all sorts of animals, but some are richer than others. Animal manure, poultry manure, but you could also have manure from residues. Some of them are richer than others. We can use them because they release that, the fertility there. Why do I like us to begin with this other one here? These manures release a lot of fertility in the soil. They help to keep more water in the soil. They help the rooting. They have the binding, uh, the binding, the binding properties. They are like cement, meaning that if you had a soil which was sandy and you put manure, it, it stops running water. Meaning that if you have a soil which was clay, the soil begins to capture the water. So you change it as it regulates the properties and does many other things. But you don't use it alone. Because there is no soil which is, that is rich to take care of itself completely. You, every soil needs additions. You have already begun with the soil. I call it capital. On top of capital, you have a deposit. I'll put the organic manure. But at one time, because they, do, they have their own limitations, you are going to need supplements and you are going to use mineral fertilizers. Those are fertilizers bought from the shops that you have got there. Now, what is the problem with this other one here? The problem with organic manure is that they release that mineral. Because they release less, they, you need large quantities for you to use. And because you need large quantities, you spend more on that one there. But because you, you spend more, it becomes costly. However, on the other hand, we then have the other type of fertilizers, which are called mineral fertilizers. Mineral fertilizers are applied only after determining which mineral is wanted very much. In the growing of banana, it is it's a well-known fact that bananas like there are more minerals, there, there, are, there are other limiting, bananas use minerals, but there are those that are liked more for them to do well. First, probably I didn't mention, in the, in the soil, there will be roots. The work, of, the work of roots is tap water, and the best root should be a root which is long, a root which is big, a root which is healthy, the roots which are many. The more they are, the better, and the, one, the element that works is phosphorus. After that, you will need the, the roots. The, the more the roots, the bigger the stem. The bigger the stem, you'll agree with me. The bigger the stem, the more the roots. The more the roots, the bigger the bunch, the more the clusters. So if you want your bunch to be good, you must start from the soil. There is no shortcut. You start with the soil and you move upward there. So if you're starting very well, now you have started with your manures. But you need to supplement. Now, the elements which are critical very much, is element which is nitrogen, which offers nitrogen, and the other one which offers potassium. What, does it, what do they do? I told you that for the roots, we need phosphorus. But for the leaves, for the leaves to be green, we need, uh, we need this one here. This is called urea. It looks like sugar. This urea here supplies nitrogen. Nitrogen, the work of nitrogen is to make sure that the leaves are green, the leaves are long, the leaves are many, and the leaves are active. What does that mean? The work of leaves is to prepare food. To prepare food means to cook food, to make food in their own process. To cook food, you need a saucepan, you need water, you need fire, you need everything for food to be well cooked. There is a system that is available there to be able to tap fire from the sun, to be able to use the water from here for them to make food there. How it does that, you leave it to yourself, but the process must be at its maximum there, and that's how it is done. So for it to be at its best, you must have very green leaves, large leaves, long leaves, and many leaves, as I've mentioned it. Because that must be done, and that should be done very well. So this is about these fertilizers here. So you have already put there, and you are going to continue. So one of the things you are going to do, and you are going to keep doing, is to make sure that you have enough food, you have enough water. You have enough food, you have enough water. What's the problem with these fertilizers? The advantage, first of all, with these fertilizers is that you will apply them when you need them. They are very cheap. Many people think that these fertilizers are expensive. Remove them from me. Take them inside. Many people think that these fertilizers are expensive. Actually, they are cheaper. That's why we recommend that a combination, a combination, combining the use of this one here, because it helps to tie water, to capture water, and then they just take them inside to keep, teach them to 
capture helps you to produce at the least cost. Remember I told you, if you want to produce, for example, you need like 12 trucks of that manure in one acre. 12 trucks of manure, they call them elves, that's about 150 per truck. That's a lot of money. For, whereas you could actually use, because not every farmer is able to use two basins. There are farmers who are able to use two basins. There are farmers who are able to use one basin. There are farmers who are able to use a quarter basin. You should take care of all the farmers. So in case a farmer wants one basin, he can use certain rate. In case a farmer has, can you apply one ba half basin, he can use another rate. And that's very, very important. Okay. Uh, you see the rain is uh, not on our side. I mm. think fellow we shall have to cut a moment. Then we go for a commercial break. But to our viewers, Please bear with us. Let's take a commercial break. Then we shall come back with Philip continuing to show us uh, all about the manures and the soil. Thank you. you can send us a question on our Facebook and Twitter handles Twitter at NTV Uganda and Facebook at NTV Uganda you can also send us via Daily Monitor at Daily Monitor on Twitter and at Daily Monitor on uh, Facebook well uh, Wilson uh, was still showing us something to do with the manure uh, when you're uh, working in uh, your banana garden Wilson uh, something that uh, I think uh, even the farmer watching from home the ha is burning uh, to them. From our we've, we've come to realize that three things are actually uh, giving them a lot of headache. One, how to manage their garden. Two, how uh, the value it then we now don't have whatever they are producing but well uh, I understand your area is more of uh, how to manage this garden so you were telling us something about this manure where that this manure come from for example when I look at this I'm seeing something like dung is this cow dung yeah. cow dung yes okay if a farmer for example does Maybe start from there. Hello, thank you. Uh, when we went off for the break, we've just been talking about fertilizers, the different type of fertilizers. And we remember we said that we've got two types of fertilizers. Those that are manures, the dungs, as we said, the dungs, all forms of dungs. The one from human beings is quicker to be processed, but also is less fertile, it has less fertility. The one which is rich is the one of animals and the birds. Now, if a farmer does not have uh, manure, enough manure, uh, we've got, uh, he can use uh, poultry manure. If that is not adequate, the farmer can then use, uh, we have worked out proportions. The recommendation is two basins, but not every farmer can use, that is what we have put there in the basket. If the farmer cannot use two baskets, afford one basin. They are able to afford half a basin. That's why I talked about those fertilizers. We've worked out rates. Which rates? Uh, which rates we've already had. Don't forget that I told you that one advantage with these manures is that the manures help. They have their own advantages, but they are unable to supply. The manures and then the fertilizers which we buy from the shop. So uh, you can use one basin, for example, and use rates of fertilizers that we have worked out. Or you can use a half a basin. For example, you can use one basin and use 25 grams of uh, urea and then uh, uh, 95 grams of what? Uh, uh, mop. mop. Mop is muriate of potash. Remember I told you that not all elements are used. There are some which are critical. In the growing of banana, the critical one is the element I was talking about when we went, I was talking about the elements 
leaves, for example, the element that works on the roots, which is potassium, phosphorus, the element that works on the leaves, which is what? Which is uh, nitrogen, and the element that works on the fruit, because you don't grow bananas for just this. Now, the element that works on fruit is what is called potassium, and it's available in soaps as muriate of potash, that brown thing that I was showing you there. Now, the work is to make sure that the fruits are good, because what people buy in the market is actually uh, the quality of the fruit, not just the size of the fruit, the quality of the fruit. So it is this, this fertilizer here that works on that. So the combination of what is on the beyond the root is now the one that works on the leaves because it helps us to manufacture, to tap water and they do the cooking and then the leaf remains green because it has the capacity. The leaf now operates like a solar panel. Which solar panel taps power from ele electricity from the sunshine? It brings on. Just if it is dry season and it is too hot, you don't want to buy. Because they not be adequate. We don't want uh, the food not to get ready. So there is it has own mechanism. It, that must be at its best when the green is good, and that's what we are saying. So going back to your question, you have these rates here. There are those who can afford very little. Doesn't mean they should not grow bananas. There are those that afford uh, two basins, half basin. We've taken care of all of them. The manures, chicken manure, poultry manure, all the manures. But the manures must be well processed. Then we continue. Now, once you have the manures, uh, once you have our manures ready now, the other thing we have to do is to make sure that we have enough water in here in the soil. And the way to keep the water is you can decide to mulch, and we have all the mulch. Mulch is the grass which is placed on top of the, on the surface of the what? The purpose of the mulch is to keep, help us keep water down, but also it decomposes and adds to the fertility of the soil. But also this mulch here helps us to suppress the weeds. The grass come up, the, the mulch will help us to suppress, on top of keeping the water. Water. The second form of keeping water is, is uh, this mass. The third form is now digging trenches in your garden. I'm afraid I will have to walk again. Where's what we call trenches? I'll walk you over with the trench. Of this water and keep it in the field. Instead of having water to run over and waste it, the water is captured in the field. You can dig the trenches, but you dig them across. The trench is about two feet, yeah, and you can go down even two feet. And that should be able to capture enough water. And this is called, there are different types of uh, trenches. This particular one is called the tie ban. The one which has portions which do not allow the water to run all through, because you could have a slope. So you tie those bands there and so you will have kept them. Another thing that you could do to be able to, to help you to keep, uh, to make sure that the amount of water that is there in the feed is, is not really, uh, uh, is not wasted, is make sure that all the time you keep your field weed free. You can see that this one is weed free. After mulching, it's important that the farmer does not bring, disturb the mulch. So don't use the hoe again. You just go ahead and hand uh, pull the weeds. The next thing that you can do is to do, uh, to keep the population, the number of suckers that are on one stool, uh, to the standard, to, don't have too many suckers. The recommendation, the recommendation is to have three to five. What do I mean? That in this case, in this setting here, you could have the mother, you could have the, the follower, you could have the daughter here. Those are three, but you still have you could still have five. You could have two followers, and then you could have the other one here. If you decide that you have too many suckers, there will be comp competition and the bunch size will be down. If you decide that you have one sucker, that, that will again mean that you are, not, you are, not have, you are having to, to wait for long before you, you get the bunches. Another thing, make sure that this, this is staggered. When you select your, when you select your plant, let them be staggered. The five plants be one size. Because you harvest at one and you fold your hands. Let it be staggered so that as you harvest this one, you have another one, and then you have another one there, and it's recycling. Another activity that you do to save water and nutrients is what we call uh, detrashing. Detrashing is the removal of trash. You can use this one. 
Detrashing is the removal of trash. Where is the panga? Detrashing is the removal of trash. Oh, detrashing is the removal of trash. Trash is anything that is what? That is dry. That needs to be what? To be removed. Anything that is hanging, that needs to be. But if you remove, don't just throw them half a sadly. You arrange them in your field in such a way that is able to have, you have a smart feed, but also the water does not run. Do not arrange them in such a way that they are sloping. Arrange them in such a way that they are across the gradient, because this is slope. We don't want to have erosion. We don't want to lose the soil. And so you remove all the hanging leaves. You do not cut the banana like you are slaughtering a chicken. You either cut it going up or you cut it going down. You see that? Don't cut it like this because when you cut, you injure and you cause wounding. So each time that you have so many wounds, the plant has to, to figure out, has to do out what? How to heal the wounds. So that's very, very important. Do not injure the plant, but continue like that. Another activity that we are going to do is to make sure that we avoid the wastage of the nutrient by removing all the male birds. A male bird is a... There's one here. The banana is like a hermaphrodite. It has got two parts. It has the and that's the part that we need. So these are the part that we don't when they send the resources here, it is meant for the wife and the husband, plus the people who live in the home. But these others here we don't need them. So we have to remove this one here, and the recommendation is that we use a forked stick. Why do we use a forked stick? Because these days we have diseases. If you use a sharp comb, we could have used this one here, but because of the danger that we have had with some diseases, we don't want to move the diseases. If it was free, we should have, surely should have just cut. But now, because we are sensitive, we are going to use this. Simpler. So what you do here, you twist. Some people do like this. But if you do this, and you leave these ones here, you leave them feeding, we don't want, we want to have as few as possible. Preferably cut it from this point here, remove off our distant one so that you have the one for handling. And that's what you, you save the, the resources. The other one now is that now you, you have our, you have all activities here. The other one is now to make sure that our banana is safe. So the other activity is to support our banana and that is called a stake. This is called staking. Staking is the bringing of a, a pole which has got two, which has got two, it's a fork, staking or propping is the supporting of a banana. The support must have, the support must have this other fork at the end here. Sometimes farmers just repeat, sometimes farmers just put a, uh, a sometimes farmers just put something like this and it is this point that the plant will break. So we want to make it safe, make it as strong as possible. Handle it from this point, but sometimes you might have to add others. At this point, you have supported them. Then we now have the other activities that help us to stabilize the mud as we prepare to move to, uh, to other activities there. Let me just show you one. This activity is called mud talking. Matoking is the cutting of a banana at the time of harvesting. Because now we have moved, our bananas are ready, and you are ready to, to harvest them. When you harvest, it's good, a good uh, habit to harvest and leave some parts up standing. Especially when you have only one plant, because it keeps stability there. Number two, the farmer might not have time to split all the stem, to chop all the what? To, all, to chop all this. So you have to do the chopping of this thoroughly well because there is what we have there and I'll be talking about the pests and the diseases now. We are going to talk about it. So this activity of matoking helps us to stabilize the mat to make sure that the, the plant the, it remains strong. But you also have this material here that will help you there where we are going now in controlling the pests and the diseases. 
There are other, other activities that attach to this one here, is what we call comb removal. Comb removal is the removal of the part. After harvesting this, you got to have to remove all this and make sure that the weevils do not eat, as I'm going to illustrate from there. Another one probably is, if your plants do not germinate well, you might have to do gap feeding. There are gaps like this one here that you need to, to cover, and you will have to, to fill them. At this point, we are now ready to go to our next activity, that is to control pests and diseases. And we are going this way. I told you that one of the factors that help to reduce the food and water from the plant is diseases. We have diseases that affect the leaves, and what do they do? They do... The plant. What up? God bless. And compare. This is a hybrid. This is a hybrid. That is a hybrid. But here, this is Chibuzi. Can you see this? Chibuzi? Looked at the other one, looked at the others, they are resistance. So one of the, the ways of controlling it is using resistance. They produce the leaves, see? and Sigatoka can only eat off some few leaves, then you retain the rest of the leaves. So manage your plantation. The plant produces so many leaves, large leaves, green leaves, and you have better bunches. It causes the bananas to wilt. One of the weeds, one of these weeds is a weed caused by fungus. That it disrupts the movement of water and nutrients from down. The plant, you see this cracking here? You see this cracking here? This is what that disease does here. And when you look at the cross section here, it, be, it has begun disrupting here from this, from this center here. This will rot and the water is not able to go this. What finally will happen is that the plant will be start rotting, cracking and die, and you see this kind of thing. And so this disease is called Fusarium weed or Panama weed. Fortunate enough, this disease affects Kalindizi, Bogoya, group Matoke where you had this one here but the next group of the next one okay Oh, Musa Kainja, it will get. But if I cut Matoke, it will not. It is. What I have to do is each time, I have to do this. I have to do this. And this is Jig. Okay. Ah, uh, we can continue. I understand, <laughs> but what is agriculture without rain? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we surely need it. So you were demonstrating something. You can continue. Yeah. So I was talking about Panama disease. This is the disease that affects Bogoya, affects Kalindizi. That disease has an musaka inja. It has been here for over 50 years, and resides in the soil. It's soil born. It means once it's there, you've got to learn to live positively with it. There is not much you can do. Okay. Except if you use resistant material. What is the resistant material? Matoke types. Okay. That is it. As long as it's Kalindizi, it is in the soil, 
it will keep there, it will keep there. So you got to use the resistant material. Okay, well, so but my I producer said, tells me we have exactly one minute. So one you minute. can sum up as we go okay. to the okay. value addition. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So mm. tools, jig and so on. This the next one is bacterial wilt, which is a wilt in the same banana they suffer from it. You must use A, O, A, B, C, D, and this is important. A, B, C, D. Make sure that you always move, avoid moving bananas which are sick. B, break off the male bud using the other fox sick. C, chop and cut all affected blood. And C, remember to disinfect your tool. As this one here, which is called the banana borer. Or ba thing here. This black insect here. This is snapping the breaking of the banana from this other bottom here. So it disrupts the I had not uh, cut by bank. Stand Big Bank is the number one fa bank for farmers. It has uh, many products for you, the farmers out there watching. So, if you want to engage in agriculture of this nature, please uh, make sure that uh, you go to any Stand Big Bank branch. But also, we have NSSF. NSSF, uh, they have uh, a product called Voluntary Benefit. Mm -hmm. So, with Voluntary Benefit, uh, you, the farmer, don't say that I've been left out by the NSSF system. You can still uh, uh, re remit your savings with NSSF through the voluntary benefit. But I also want to thank Naro, uh, the, the, our hosts today here at uh, uh, Kawanda Station. And uh, of course, NTV uh, bringing you this uh, training live from the comfort of your home. Well, uh, we have a very uh, interesting pieces of work here. Uh, this is this looks to be the cuticle of Maiga. Dr. Priva, you're taking us through this section. Please, uh, we shall we shall share the microphone. Please come over. So uh, when I see, okay, this looks like uh, banana fiber. Uh, these are uh, these are I think they are table mats. Okay, table mats. And by the way, the prices are also here very quite. Uh, friendly prices. Uh, we also have uh, some watches and by the way all these are coming from the banana. So you the farmer who has been throwing away uh, all uh, the, the fiber, the ones that you get from your garden, now you see uh, they are actually of very very much use. Um, is this a lamp? I think this is a lamp. A lamp holder. Okay, um, at this moment in time I think I'll introduce uh, Dr. Priva. Please come uh, and uh, we. Okay, I don't. I think I don't need this anymore. Yes, Doctor Priva, good evening. Good evening to you. Yes, uh, we see very very beautiful pieces of work here. Mm. Uh, is this what you would call the value addition from the bananas? Part of it. Part of it. Yes. Uh, I was telling Wilson uh, one of the things that the farmers want to understand, mm. especially from this section one is uh please come closer one is the value addition mm. what wh what you're saying is a bit of what we are seeing here mm. then two uh the commercialization where do they get the market mm. for example someone has this kind of beautiful artwork where do they get ma the market but also the food from the garden mm. the market is still a big problem to the mm. farmers mm. maybe i'll let you explain from there Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, from what you have been told about the Okrut has taken us through the growing, the management, and uh, how much we, what we get, what we need to put in to get out the most out of growing bananas. So, after we have increased production, after we have uh, 
had the maximum input and maximum output, we know that we have been growing bananas mainly for food. But uh, the direction we are taking now is growing bananas, or farming bananas for, for cash, for more than food, just beyond food, beyond food, not just eating. So ideally, the banana plant you can get, you can use every part of the plant to add value. You can get value from the leaves, you can get value from the fruit, you can get value from the pseudo stem, you can get value from the comb, the, the, the last part of the plant. The main thing that is being utilized is, is the fruit. Of course, we eat the fruit, but there is different uh, value chains in the utilization of the fruit. We have uh, people who are, who are using the, the fruit to make, to make juices, beverages, there's, ju there's uh, people who are doing wine, there's uh, people who are doing flour, there's, you know, there's uh, from the fruit, there are people who are making crisps, there are people who are exporting fresh bananas, all these are opportunities in the, in the utilization of the fruit. They, they said there are also people who are doing uh, drying and... Okay, you want me to go this side. So, uh, so, the, then, so that is the part of utilization of the fruit. We, also part, we are also able to utilize the, the stem, the pseudo stem. Usually when, you fi when the, the banana has been harvested, the stem is left in the, in the, in the plantation. But we, there, is an, there is a budding industry for banana fiber, and that's what we are exhibiting today. We are, we are in partnership with different other companies that are, are adding value to the different parts of the plant. But today we are exhibiting uh, our partner, TechFad, and uh, it's, it's, it's TechFad Vocational in, uh, incubate, Business Incubator. They are located in Mukono. So TexFad is in partnership with us to make uh, products from banana fiber. So what we have here, you may have to go on that side. What we have here is carpet from fiber, first of all. Uh, we, we do have this, what, maybe what you have on the other side, over the other side is pseudo stems. Now those pseudo stems, we, they are the ones where fiber is made from. And I'm going to request Simon to have a quick demonstration or how the fiber is extracted. So here is a machine that extracts the fiber. we have here is fiber from bananas and this is very good quality high fiber from from our from one of our our improved hybrids which has already been released now this fiber is manually woven to make that type of fiber and this can be used is being used to make different products what we have here is car rugs for example we have car rugs and a piece a piece of, of uh, car rug here goes for 50,000. We have, um, we are demonstrating bedside rugs. You have a piece that goes for 65 to 100,000. You have round, round mats there, and these are 100%. They are 100% banana fiber. They have a lifespan that is not less than 20 years. So that is that aspect of, uh, of, of products. Again, from... Uh, from banana fiber, the, what, what remains after the fiber has been extracted can be used to make briquettes. But also, not only that, the, from fiber we can make, uh, uh, apart from the, the rugs, we are, uh, the, the, there is also textile, so cloth, there is also paper, and, uh, and also making of briquettes. So today I, we have an illustration here of of briquettes from banana waste and 
they, 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 are, they have a, a, an advantage that when you compare it with charcoal from, from timber, they, you, have the, you have a cost advantage, but you also have a, a cooking time advantage. Bre while one kilogram of charcoal will last you only 40 minutes of cooking time, one kilogram of charcoal will last you two hours of cooking time. What that means is that for a, fi a, 50, a, kilo a 50 kilogram bag of charcoal, you're able, you're, you get three times more cooking time, but three, three times less the cost in terms of input. So, and, and then it is clean energy. This is clean energy, but also this is a good way of, is a, is a potential way of contributing to the waste management that we have in urban, in the urban cities. You can see when bananas are traded into the urban center, they all come with the peels, with the, 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 the parts of the pseudo stem, all the waste that comes from bananas, instead of cluttering Tezi and, and all the, the crowd that is in Kampala and all the urban centers in this country, we, are, we should be able to make, there's a potential here industry for making briquettes. And this is happening. So here are the briquettes. We have the 10 kilogram bag at 10,000 shillings and the bags are here. You can pick one for yourselves. So that's the, the advantage for cooking time. Um, there's also table mats. And these are also, this a set of six pieces at 60,000 for, uh, that this is 97%, this 97% is uh, banana fiber. And all this is making value to the pseudo stem which would have been, which would have been thrown out. So they, we are only exhibiting really fiber, fiber. And as I said, there's a lot more, there are, there are a lot more other things happening in use, utilizing the fruit and utilizing the, the other components of, of the plant. Um, but for, it is, it is really to say that for farmers, where you have, where there is excess in the, in the production, and even the stems that you have on the plant, they can be used. You don't have to wait and rely only on the, on the bunch. The thing that we would, I would like to say to, to the, fa the fa our farming community is, I would, we would like to encourage us to embrace uh, improved varieties. We would like uh, us to embrace nutrition because the plant needs to be fed. If a plant is not fed, then we don't have output from it. I think that has clearly been emphasized. The other thing is for purposes of building and accessing markets, the farmers have got to stop working in silos. The, there has to be a shift from, and we have a good shift now from working as single farmers to working in groups. For example, we have the Uganda Banana Growers Cooperative Union, which is bringing together cooperative societies to be able to harness access to inputs, to be able to harness uh, improvements and, and, uh, and working together to improve productivity, to be able to access markets, but also to lobby for, um, for supportive policy structures. So we encourage farmers to join these groups so that together, when the farmers are together, they, they are able to trade in, in more meaningful ways, but also getting better value out of the produce, uh, out of the produce that uh, they make. Okay, uh, I, I thank you, <laughs> Dr. Priva. Well, these are, I, I must say this, these are very beautiful uh, pieces of work. But uh, one question, briefly, where can uh, a person interested, for example, in this art piece, the car mat, uh, the round mat, where can they find them? Texford. Okay. Texford is a uh, Texford incubation, let me see what they are called, vocational, bis Texford vocational business incubator is a vocational training and business um, partner with